that 2008 season, I got like third, like three times in like one of them was a Grand Prix. So it was like, for, for my standards, it was not good. And it was very frustrating. Um, and, you know, it was to think that you can just do the same type of like routine stuff and have it work out the same way and then have it not work out was a very hard thing to deal with. I mean, Ed can attest to the fact that I just was a mess. I was a complete mess. I had no confidence in myself or my abilities whatsoever. Um, the Olympics were a few months away and I just didn't know what to do with myself. Um, but luckily, again, that support system was right behind me. You know, Ed was, even though I would throw my saber in the middle of a lesson because I was so frustrated, you know, Ed would just wait for me to go pick it up and keep working with me. And um, I had, you know, I just it was just like a funk that I couldn't get out of and it was worrying me because I'm like, well, now what are people going to say? I went to Athens and it was a fluke that I won or, you know, I'm going to lose because I'm not prepared, I'm not feeling um, as confident as I was going into Athens. And I made the team, you know, it was easy to make the team. Uh, we had a really strong team with myself and Becca Ward, Sadie Jacobson. Um, but it just wasn't clicking. And I remember having this conversation with my dad and just being like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know. Like, I can't, I just can't fence anymore. I feel like I'm not myself, which is really frustrating for somebody who, you know, is used to winning and used to being the best and was an Olympic champion and all of a sudden feels like they don't have a chance in the world to win in a, in a couple weeks when I leave for Beijing. And my dad said to me, you know, you just have to realize that for the, ever since, you know, you've been fencing, ever since you've been going to Oregon Fencing Alliance, ever since you've been going to all these tournaments, taking all those lessons, spending all those hours dedicating yourself to this, that whole time you're doing that, you're laying the foundation for what's going to happen in the future. You're, you're, you already have that foundation. You already have those abilities. You already know that you're a good fencer. You just need to relax. You just need to not worry about it. You just need to let go and trust your own ability and trust your own skills and just know that you've done the work. You've put the work in. And you just need to go there and not worry about it. You just need to go there and fence how you know how to fence and trust yourself and trust the fact that you put every single effort that you can into being the best. And when you are going to sleep the night before you fence and you wake up and go to compete on your individual event in Beijing, there's nothing else you can do leading up those days leading up, those hours, those minutes leading up to when you fence that's going to change what's going to happen because you've already put in all that work. You just need to relax and just, you know, just let it go. Let what's going to happen happen, and and trust yourself, and trust your own abilities, and trust the work that you put in. And after that conversation, it all just kind of all my stresses just melted away. I did just let it click. I let it flow. It was probably only a couple weeks before we left for Beijing that I was finally winning bouts in practice. I wasn't even winning bouts in practice before that. And then I finally started winning bouts in practice finally felt good about, you know, the way that I was fencing and, and got my confidence back just in time, went to Beijing and was able to repeat, so <laughs> that was, uh, you know, just hearing that a couple weeks before and just keeping that mantra going in my head and then having, you know, the support of my family and my coaches around me is just, it's an incredible thing and it's an incredible power that can really lift you up when you think that nothing else can. So. That's, you know, and then I was able to repeat in, in Beijing and the rest is history, I guess. I won. And then the only thing missing was World Championships individual that I hadn't won. And then, I mean, there's not really a story behind that. I kind of just went and won, so. <laughs> um, so, anyway, I guess the moral of the story of my whole journey is just to, I mean, you are coaches, so you're kind of on the other side of, thing, of things. And, but from my perspective, it's really important I mean, to be honest, not every single one of you in here is going to be coaching Olympic champions. Like, not statistically possible, right? But if you think about it, like, sorry, sorry, no, it's, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's impossible. There, there might be, you know, someone out there, but I'm just, I think the most important thing to realize is, um, is to have a good relationship with your students and with your pupils and just 
trust them and support them and have a good relationship that you can talk openly about, you know, things, even if it's like on a personal level, has nothing to do with fencing. As long as you're friends with them and you're able to just know each other and support each other, it's going to make the biggest difference in their results and in, in your <coughs> overall, like, communication with one another and your, um, just the way that things work and flow. And, and it, it can't, couldn't be more important to be a supportive coach and understand what that fencer is going through and kind of sympathize and empathize and support them no matter what, you know. If, if that Nigerian girl never pulled out, I know that Ed would still work with me. He wouldn't give up on me. And, and you know, it would have been hard to watch someone else win in Athens, but who knows, you know, I would have maybe still been able to carry on and go to Beijing and win again. So, um, you know, it's just important to also have fun because when I wasn't having fun, it was not fun. <laughs> it was not, when I, I didn't want to do it when I wasn't having fun. And, um, you know, at, at that period of time, right before, like a couple months before Beijing, and was kind of trying to force me to like take a vacation. And I was like, I can't, and I can't do it. So, it's, you know, it's just, it's really important to just recognize that Everyone's human, and life is not predictable. Your fencing career is not predictable, but just as long as you're out there and um, putting your best abilities into your students, then I think it's really going to rub off and um, you know make them the best fencer that they can be. As long as you're being the best coach that you can be to them, so I guess I hope that that you know is something that you can take away from this coach's college this weekend. And tomorrow we'll talk more about tactical stuff but that's kind of my story of things of how I got to be where I am today. And right now I'm, um, like I said, going to go to World Championships in Paris in November, and then after that the next goal is London, 2012. And then if I retire, maybe Ed will retire, but if I don't retire, then we're going to keep going, right? <laughs> it's kind of up to me, I think, so. <laughs> um, so I guess we can open it up to questions now if you want, or talk to me tomorrow, I'll be here, I'll be around, and hopefully we can teach each other some things. So. Thank you.